Welcome back. You're watching a live and continuing coverage of Namaste Obama. India and the United States have achieved a major breakthrough over issues that were holding back the implementation of a landmark civil nuclear deal between the two countries. Uh, we've now got access to the India-US-Delhi declaration of uh, friendship put out by the White House. Uh, and this speaks of chale saath saath, forward, together we go. Uh, it also talks about sajha prayas, sabka vikas, shared effort, progress for all. Uh, Ajay Shukla, you had an opportunity to go through this. How different is this from the statement put out on the back of the Washington trip? Well, first of all, it's not just a matter of semantics, though semantics have to be there. And the Treaty of Friendship uh, recalls a very successful treaty in earlier times with a country that no longer exists, as Siva just tweeted. Uh, the Soviet Union, Indo-Soviet Treaty of Friendship and Cooperation. Uh, but here they've done a, a more substantive division of responsibility over here. This will now have two components, a strategic and defense component, which will be uh, handled between the Indian Foreign Ministry and the De State Department of the US. And now addressing a key US concern, it will also have an economic and commercial component which will be handled between the commerce ministries of both sides. So I think that, that's a big step so forward. Seema, are we essentially seeing the United States take over from where the USSR was while India said we're forever non-aligned, but the, but the USSR was India's predominant partner? Are we seeing now when Obama and Modi talk about this being a global uh, friendship, uh, USA stepping into that role? I wouldn't go so far as to say that, uh, that the Americans are going to replace what uh, the Russians were uh, or the Soviets were at one time for India. But clearly, clearly India and the US have moved closer together. Uh, the Modi government, what it has shown is that it's not shy about acknowledging uh, the American friendship. Uh, there are no doubts, at least at the topmost levels. Um, Modi clearly wants to have America as a major partner of India, and that's uh, crossing a psychological barrier. I do not know, I, I think it'd be foolish to predict uh, right away that the Americans have totally replaced uh, our other good friends. Uh, I think everybody... But are we seeing some sort of the first step in that direction? possibly of a far closer relationship between India and the United States understand. than ever before. Uh, I'm quite clear that the declaration of friendship, although it is the reorganization like Ajay just uh, explained to us, but it is also a clear Modi message that yes, I'm elevating this partnership. Yes, I'm very keen to move west, westwards. Uh, I'm not sure we are there yet, but I'm quite certain that if we were to take these um, uh, these initiatives to the next level we are moving there and and uh, we may not call it ever an alliance or a partnership and we, we may just be too big uh, for each other to be in, in in that particular bracket but certainly i think steps have been taken to to uh, to announce uh, a decision that this administration is going to pursue america as a logical partner this has always world. been a diplomatic stumbling block for previous Prime Ministers, never wanting to be seen as being too close to the United States. Has India moved on in a way where Modi can be very nonchalant about the relationship and in fact talk Tom it as one of his big achievements? Sanjay. Uh, you know, at least in the US, the perception is uh, Modi went to Japan and he saw the Jap Japanese economy is kind of uh, sliding. Uh, he went to China, he was on the swing with China and there was border incursions and he realized that maybe the United States has a real alignment in terms of investment technology. The U.S. economy is coming up. And I think he's an assertive prime minister. This is an assertive nation. It's a young nation, which is wants more, what the United States wants. And yes, it is now a different chapter, as he must say. I want to bring in uh, General Shankar Prasad on counter-terrorism and what the two principles spoke of. Uh, do you think that the kind of expectation that India had on cooperation, real-time cooperation from the United States will be achieved on the back of this joint statement, General Prasad? Yes, I think so. Let me just first say the first thing. Please remember what Mr. Narendra Modi said. Isko parde ke piche rehne do. Keep things under wrap. These are, lot, uh, these are issues which have tremendous security implications and he didn't want uh, the, to give out the details. As far as the issue of terrorism is concerned, from whatever little I have understood from what 
he said and what the president of uh, United States said and what little we heard of the press conference, it seems to me that this is something that has really been achieved as a doable. I feel that both countries have agreed that terrorism has to be addressed and, and, the, and the only way they can be addressed is by sharing intelligence and developing uh, capabilities to use that intelligence in an effective manner. So personally, I think this is amongst the highest um, issue that has been resolved today and I'm very hopeful that uh, progress in this direction is going to be most beneficial for us. Whether all the other nuclear deals and defense technology transfers, the, our, you've got to go through the fine print. We do not okay. know what the fine print no, I, I have some of the fine so print coming out really now. And I'm keen on reading out least. to our viewers paragraph 40 and 41, which were on Pakistan. I'll start with paragraph 41. The leaders reaffirmed the need for joint and concerted efforts to disrupt entities such as the lashkar e taiba Listen very carefully. Entities such as the lashkar e taiba the Jaish-e-Mohammed, the D Company, and the Haqqani Network and agree to continue ongoing efforts through the Homeland Security Dialogue as well as the next round of the U.S.-India Joint Working Group on Counter-Terrorism in late 2015 to develop actionable elements of bilateral engagement. The two sides noted the recent U.S. sanctions against three D Company affiliates. The Prime Minister and the President further agreed to continue working towards an agreement to share information on known and suspected terrorists. This uh, now reaching out to our viewers for the first time, exclusive details available to headlines today about the paragraphs on Pakistan. They also agreed to enter discussions to deepen col uh, collaboration on UN terrorist uh, designations and reiterated their call for Pakistan to bring the perpetrators of the November 2008 terror attack in Mumbai to justice. So there's a mention of the D Company. Uh, which isn't an American priority at all, Samir Saran. Is this an acknowledgement of India's concerns on Dawood Ibrahim and how the United States needs to help out? I think even before the visit, you could see that the U.S. was making an effort to uh, communicate that they are mindful of India's sensitivities in this regard. But I'm also, uh, I'm also quite certain in my previous visits to the U.S. that the community there has been quite uh, you know, energetic in, in proposing to Indians to, to cooperate on real-time intelligence sharing. And I think the laziness or the, or, the, or the lethargy was at our end. And I think, you said shy, I think this administration seems to be getting over that, that, that diffidence of, of uh, cooperating with the U.S. So do you see this put extra pressure on Pakistan to act against the D company? Absolutely. But I think what we have to recognize is the evolution in the United States uh, uh, in its attitudes towards terrorism. The rise of ISIS has shaken the West's confidence and they no longer think of uh, you know this terrorist is against you and this terrorist is against me so therefore I'm only going to act against this group. Uh, it's all a seamless mess. What they have recognized is that terrorists are cooperating with each other much more than the good guys are cooperating with each other. So uh, I think uh, it is just a logical uh, movement from there that we mentioned D Company because their financial networks of all these people support uh, other terrorist groups that directly attack the United States. Okay, what will the reaction likely be in Pakistan, uh, Ajay Shukla, on the mention of the D Company? There's also the Haqqani network, but importantly, there's the Lashkar e Taiba, the Jaish e Mohammed, and the D Company too. Actually, I I would find it hard to overplay the importance of these two paragraphs. Everything that we've been saying since the morning has proven wrong by these two paragraphs. We said that intelligence sharing and cooperation is not spoken about, it's under the covers. General Shankar Prashad was saying the same thing just now. Others have said it before. The very fact that the Indo-US joint statement is now naming these four entities talking about disrupting Pakistan-based terror groups and uh, talking openly of actionable intelligence between the two sides not just means that the United States is cooperating very closely with India, but it doesn't care so much about Pakistani sensitivities and it does not really uh, believe that Pakistan needs to be mollycoddled. There's a message for Pakistan in this. So as much there's a very a important line world. which says that both countries will continue to work towards an official agreement to share information 
on known and suspected terrorists because the United States has a big five, big nine, big 11, big four, uh, I, I, uh, agreement with other five countries, eyes, five eyes, eyes, nine eyes, 11 eyes, 14 eyes, but you don't have a similar agreement, a written agreement with India. Now they're officially saying they want to work towards it. Samir. See, and remember that in the last joint statement in September when Modi went to Washington, all these groups were named in that as well. So this is the second time that these groups have been named at in that joint statement also we talked about actionable intelligence so from there flows the US decision to uh, name the brother of Dawood Ibrahim which happened just last week in Washington the tre Treasury de Department named this guy uh, and imposed sanctions so no but there's also a backlash from much. China we're seeing China and Pakistan keep a very close eye on this visit We've seen an official Chinese think tank saying that America is trying to co-opt India into an anti-Chinese axis. We've seen the Pakistani army spokesperson put out a tweet saying that the Pakistani army and the Chinese army are like iron brothers. So General Shankar Prasad, that playing out as well, uh, China and Pakistan looking very carefully and reaffirming their friendship with each other at a time when India and the United States are coming closer. Absolutely correct. And particularly when you read the last fine print, uh, the, the, uh, it's been like music to the ear. And certainly both Pakistan and China are going to be a bit wary about it. The fact is that America and India are real partners in strate uh, strategic developments here. They've accepted that terrorism has to be addressed. They've uh, accepted that India has to be made militarily stronger. When these things go to China, obviously they get wary about it. There is definitely a certain amount of, I wouldn't say panic, but perhaps panic in Pakistan and very cautious uh, progress and looking at from China. Well, this is uh, clearly something I would like that to see more of this fine print, but obviously the issues concerning intelligence are never going to come out in a better print than what you've already just read out. But it is, it is giving us a lot of confidence that here we are, uh, together we're going to fight uh, terrorism. It has been said that we must fight terrorism worldwide all together. But this is the first time that such a statement has been made and it is really uh, uh, very heartening for India and I'm quite sure we must have worked pretty hard to get this thing approved. Absolutely, because at the time of the David Headley revelations, there were several concerns about how much information was shared with India, what part of the information was held back, not shared. If there is an official information sharing agreement about terror activities on a real-time basis, some of those problems can be preempted. Maybe a Mumbai-style attack can be stopped. And that indeed would mount pressure on Pakistan. I need to slip into a very quick break. We'll return with more paragraphs that we've now been able to go through on climate change and also on defense. Rick, uh, yeah. But there have been very few tangible results. This visit, though, high on symbolism has finally managed to take the bilateral relationship out of cold storage. Take a look. <laughs> A visit high on symbolism, but also with a promise to back it with substance. To a question from headlines today, Obama confirmed that he was absolutely overwhelmed by the Indian hospitality. Hospitality to which Modi lent a personal touch after the bilateral talks at the Hyderabad house. Prime Minister Modi and President Obama took a stroll without any aids, followed by tea under a gazebo made by Modi himself. The aim was to iron out any unresolved issues that may have held up in the US ties so far. And while the Ministry of External Affairs promised it would be a historic visit by the American President, the day was replete with symbolism. In a break from protocol, Prime Minister Modi first received the Obamas at the Palam Airport. There was then speculation that he would accompany his American counterpart to Rajkhat. It would have recreated the September 2014 moment when Obama in a surprise move accompanied Modi to the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial in New York. President Barack Obama spent short but significant time here at Rajkhat paying tributes to the father of the nation Mahatma Gandhi. 
quoting Martin Luther King, his own inspiration, saying, the spirit of Mahatma Gandhi is still alive in the country. To keep him remembering Mahatma Gandhi, the memorial did give him three gifts, the charkha, three books and a statue of Mahatma Gandhi. But Modi was busy ensuring that preparations were in order at the Rashtrapati Bhavan for the ceremonial guard of honour, led by Wing Commander Pooja Thakur. Oh, being the guard commander for an inter-services uh, guard of honour and that too for Mr. Barack Obama, I'm sure it was a very proud moment for the Indian Air Force and for myself also. Uh, namaste. Each of these gestures were returned by the Americans. Obama was through the day seen greeting people with a namaste. The feeling was mutual as expressed in a message from the White House that ended with a Jai Hind. The stage was set for the big announcement. With Javed Ansari, Gaurav Savant and Kamal Chitan Delhi, Bureau Report, Headlines Today. Okay, I want quick final comments from all our guests, starting with Sanjay Puri first, on how successful, in your view, the visit has been so far. Well, I think it's been very successful. Firstly, obviously, the optics are very good. You know, for the past two years, everybody said Barack Obama is not interested in India. Uh, everybody from you know, India would come and they would say the same to us. He has put that to doubt. He uh, put all those doubts uh, to rest. And now with this nuclear deal and... So do you see American companies now actually invest now that the deal has been operationalized and their main concerns have been assuaged? On the nuclear front? Yes. Uh, they have to make their own business decision. I mean, you've got to understand there are only two companies in the U.S. that do this stuff. And it uh, sounds like a big deal, but in big scheme of things, it's not that huge commercially. But they'll make their own business decisions. The devils, as they say, is in the details. Now they have to make their own decisions. But there are many other things, defense, climate change, and other things. Climate change was very, very important for the president. Very, very important. Has India him. gone far enough on climate change, in your view, Samir? I think India has been very prudent uh, as far as climate is concerned. What they have said is that they, ha they will go and be ambitious on renewables. Uh, President Obama has uh, promised financial flows and basically it means trying to uh, do more of what they've been doing for the past few years. We are one of the largest beneficiaries of uh, uh, clean, funds, uh, clean, uh, clean funds flowing from the U.S. Um, they have signed three MOUs for smart cities, which kind of is a sustainable sustainability objective as well. And uh, they have both decided to elevate the conversation of climate to leader level. I don't know what that means, but as for one of the briefing notes I read. Because then, India uh, can't possibly afford to get locked down in very stringent conditions. No, let me, let me tell you, I think I, I have argued that if we, if we were to uh, follow the pattern of the US-China climate deal, we should have taken that deal. But I don't think that deal does enough on climate mitigation. Basically, the climate US deal is a sweetheart deal for both the big polluters. Uh, what we have done sensibly is to pursue our current national emissions uh, on solar, wind, etc. We are doing that. Smart cities, we are doing that. And we have started talking about trying to find a consensus in Paris so that countries like us, which are most vulnerable, can uh, force larger emitters to take responsibility for the past. Ajay Shukla, given the forward movement on de defense cooperation, will we actually see Modi's dream of come make in India when it comes to defense technologies actually materialize? Uh, I think that we've got the process going now. I think the whole, this is the big difference in the way that we are pursuing this relationship with the United States when you compare with earlier partnerships where there were, you know, chunky deliverables uh, and deals that had to be signed. This is a process where there are many sort of alignments that have to be made between the two bureaucracies, between the two legal systems. And then once all those systems are harmonized, you can then look forward to more uh, projects being made on a co-development and co-manufacturing basis. We're still at that initial stage of harmonizing the two processes. Uh, that's what the DTTI is meant to be doing. It's a tool for harmonizing the two processes. So this is a very long-term game to say how it will play out and the kind of... But General Shankar Prasad, a lot of the carping uh, pertains to the fact that a lot of the technologies that are being offered by the Obama ad administration under the Defense Trade and Technology Initiative are actually not really cutting-edge technologies. These are technologies that have existed in the U.S. for a very long time, some going back decades. Do you think that's a good starting point to get this relationship uh, off to a start or do you believe India should be pressing for more contemporary technologies? Well, well uh, let me just start by saying 
that I am the the way the thing has panned out since the morning, the way the chemistry has been displayed, the way the press conference is conducted, the way the chai pe charcha has been done, the way the uh, press conference of the foreign. But if you see in an overall context, in a period of just a couple of hours, more than uh, not more than about a couple of three four hours, a lot has been achieved. Uh, I didn't expect so much to happen. I think this visit is a great success. I think there are a lot more opportunities still before he leaves the whole of tomorrow. Uh, some more uh, dialogue will take place between the Prime Minister and the President. Overall, I feel a lot has been achieved. A lot of it is under wraps. A lot of it is under parde ke piche. Obviously, it will remain parde ke piche because everybody, everything cannot be brought into public domain. But if you ask me personally, I've been watching it with you since the morning. I am very happy and satisfied with the way the things have gone, whether it's the nuclear deal issue, whether it's the defense cooperation, whether it is terrorism in particular, whether it is climate change. All of these have only given positive issues. I haven't heard okay. anything negative. That's, Therefore, that's um, correct. I there would are a lot of the stumbling blocks have been set aside. They're trying to find ground for maneuvering their way forward. And remember, this is a Prime Minister who was persona non grata uh, till just a few months ago in the United States to have been able to make such substantial ground, overcoming the deficit that existed earlier by itself is a very big achievement. Our coverage will continue all through the evening. We're slipping into a very quick break. We return.